Start marking your diagram for number one, statements, reasons. I'm not going to be able to watch that today. Okay, let's start talking here. Uh, I didn't write it in the givens here. I wanted to save some time, but everyone, let's not overlook EF intersects AB and DC. Anytime they tell me two lines intersect, they probably want me to look for vertical angles or maybe even supplement or linear pairs, right? But this, this part's vertical. Next thing I want to make sure we're clear on. Notice how I've numbered three angles. It's because I want you to focus on those three. You know, if you're raising your hand and calling me over and say, hey, could I call this angle four and this angle five? We're probably not seeing the proof. Okay, we're just not seeing it. All right, please only use the numbered angles. You shouldn't have to add to the diagram. You should never have to add to the diagram. Just focus on the numbered angles. So we are trying to prove angle one and angle three are congruent. Well, those everyone agree those aren't vertical. So this isn't going to be a two-step proof, then I'm done. So I need another fact now. All right, I have three congruent to two. Now it's on you. Look at my diagram, angles one, two, and three. Tell me a relationship between two of them right now. On your own, something I didn't give you. One, two, and three. There's a relationship between two of them, and what is it? This is why we told you the lines intersect each other. Here we go, relationship. Eight, Shara, you see any relationship between any of those three angles? Or what? Just went over a whole bunch here. They're called what? They're opposite each other, formed by two intersecting lines. What do we call them? Vertical. Vertical angles. And what do I know about them now from the homework? They're congruent. And that's the big fact for today. All right. One is congruent to two. I do not want definition of vertical angles because that is not true. I want the theorem, the last theorem I'm providing you guys with today, which is vertical angles are congruent. That's what I want in there, not definition of vertical. That won't be accepted. All right, everyone's good on those two being vertical. We can identify that. Next up, all right, remember, I need one and three equal to each other, though. And we have gotten everything we can out of the diagram now. Look at what you've just written in your proof. You only have two statements. You have three congruent to two, one congruent to two. So I need somebody's help with something I showed you day one of this unit, how to bring those two together. Three congruent to two, one congruent to two. Oh, hey, 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 I see angle two repeating. I see two angles that are equal to the same angle. Finish it for me then. Name another pair that should be equal. 13, Jonathan, what pair should be equal now? And angle one, but they're not vertical. It's another reason we have up on the board here. All right, why are three and one now congruent? We used what property here? Nine, Woo. Vinny? Uh, so. Darn right, good man, substitution. If two angles are equal to the same one, they gotta be equal to each other. We call that substitution. All right, we good there. That's basic vertical angle use there. Now we're gonna get a little more advanced. Any, everyone's all right on the substitution we use at the end and why it's substitution and not some other crazy fact maybe you wanted to write in. All right, let's go. We got three to do it as a group and then you're, well, three to do as a class and then you're gonna to go to your groups. All right, do your thing here. Here we go, set it up, mark it.
Oh, there it is again. A, E, B, and C, E, D intersect. I wonder why they gave us that. Along with X congruent to Y. Alrighty, here we go. We got to get M congruent to N now. Prove angle M congruent to angle N. Let's throw this theory right out the window. They are not vertical. Okay, they are, if I highlight angle M and angle N, they are not formed by two intersecting lines. Okay, plus, plus, guys, think about it. This is almost like a common sense talk I'm having with you. Why would it be two steps? Why would I even bother giving you X congruent to Y then? Right. Everything I provide to you in the givens has to be used. So there's got to be a reason why I gave you X congruent to Y. This just can't be a two-step proof then. All right, let's talk about the two lines that do intersect though. AEV and CED intersect each other. Probably for a reason, right? They told me that for a reason. They probably want me to look for some vertical angles if they intersect it. So I'm going to give you guys time to think about it in your head, see if anybody can pick what type of proof this is. Uh, this is. But if somehow I need to use X and Y to get M and N. Okay, I need to use X and Y and M and N. And maybe does anybody see any vertical angles with those intersecting lines up there? And what proof is, what type of proof is this actually? I'm not going to put anybody on the spot, but anybody think they see something here that maybe we could uh, do to get to M and N to grow it to each other. It's not going to take two steps. What's up, Dylan? What's your thought process? Okay, we can stop talking right there. Yeah, you're correct. This is going to be a subtraction one. Where in the world did he get subtraction? Does anybody see a pair of vertical angles that are congruent up there using those intersecting lines I just highlighted in yellow? Anybody see them? Name them, Simon. B, E, A, and B. B, E, C, and D, E, A, everyone. Look at, are you ready? Now, I could have picked those two, but they have nothing to do with M, X, N, and Y. So we're picking these two. D, E, A with B, E, C. Everyone see those two? And what happens if I take those two and subtract X and Y from them? What angles do I end up with? M and N. M and N. All right. Uh, can I write subtraction right now in step two? Why not, Drew? Darn right, I need two pairs. I only have one. So the second pair is going to be the vertical angles I just marked. DEA, congruent to angle BEC. Vertical angles are congruent. Now it's time to subtract. Not off the hook yet. I need uh, two people here. Let me know the pairs of angles I'm subtracting, though, to get to X and Y. All right, somebody name a pair of angles I need to subtract to get to angle X or angle Y. It's up to you. You can pick first here. Vinny, you start up. Angle? Uh, AEC. AEC? This angle? Uh, oh, uh, AED. How about AED? Yep, I called it DEA, so I'll stick there. What do you got to subtract from it? Uh, angle M. Angle? Well, you, I don't want to mention M. That's what I'm trying to get. Oh, yeah. Okay. So minus angle what? F -E -A. Angle X. Yep. All right. I don't want to mention M or N in my proof until the very end. And then on the bottom, what two angles am I going to have to subtract to get to angle Y? 11, Makai. Sorry. Go ahead, Makai. Oh, 
Say that one more time. B E C minus. You got it. Here's my subtraction. And just like we've done every single proof this unit, how does it end? If I just did addition or subtraction, how does this always end? Substitution, right? To say angle M congruent to angle N. A little bit tougher, but still using vertical angles to do subtraction. Anything here you want to talk about? Okay, last one together. And then a lot of practice time on your own. Mark what you can mark, write down what you can write down. Whoo! A lot of vertical angles in that diagram. talk we got to get four and six congruent are four and six vertical four and six are they vertical nope all right so definitely not a two-step proof plus why would i give you the big givens right not a two-step i got to get to four and six though look at the two statements you just wrote down though before i start finding different things on my diagram if one's congruent to two and two's congruent to three automatically what angles can i put congruent right now in step number two without even looking at my diagram. One and two, two and three, that means what pair has to be equal right away. Uh, 20, Brendan, what two angles right away have to be equal? I got that, that's given. One's congruent to two, two's congruent to three. Angle one and angle three, not because they're vertical, what did he just use? Substitution, right, that's substitution. So without even looking at the diagram, I already know one and three are equal. Keep in mind where we got to get to, four and six. So in this next step, when you look in your diagram, I'd really like to know something about four or I'd really like to know something about six because that's where I'm trying to get to. I really don't care about five, three. I'm trying to get to four or six. So next person, can you give me a true fact about either angle four or angle six based on the diagram? I don't care about the other angles right now. I want something about four or I want something about six. What do you got for me? 12, Finley, four or six. Give me a true statement. Yeah, yep. Six congruent to three because they're what? Vertical angles, good work. Vertical angles are congruent. Good job. Stop. Don't go back to the diagram. Look at we just look at the last two statements we just wrote. One and three are equal, six and three are equal. Don't go back to the diagram. It's just gonna get more confusing. Stop right here. One and three, six and three, there should be another pair of angles which are now congruent to each other. Ooh, 18. Lily. Three. Well, I got that three and six. I have one and three and six and three. So that makes six and one, not because they're vertical, but by substitution. I'm showing you this proof because you have multiple substitutions in here. You can't just do this proof with one substitution only. All right, I have six and one, but I need four and six. So now I think somebody's gonna tell me something about angle four. 
You got to introduce angle four now. I have angle six taken care of. Now I, somebody introduced me to a fact about angle four based on that diagram. 4N, 14, Stephanie. I need something about angle four in that diagram. Because they're what? Vertical angles are congruent. Yep. Notice how we're doing everything in a single step, keeping everything separate. Okay, I think we're at the finish point, I think. Look at those two. Six and one, four and one. <coughs> now, bless you, what angles are now congruent to each other? Seven. Let's finish this off, Drew. Angle six. Yep. Because they're vertical or... No, because of substitution. substitution a third time. Yep. All right, again, purpose of doing this proof with you guys, I just don't want you to look at the diagram and start writing down some random things. Look at what you've already, look, look at what you've already written down. Two and three led to four. Four and five led to six. Okay, so look at what you already have. Okay, flip it over. You know the deal from yesterday. You and your group, number one, call me over when it's completely done and everybody has their correct work written or you think has the correct work written down. Okay, flip it over. This is part of your homework tonight.